Hello there once again. Welcome back to our exam review series. This time we'll be doing exam review for question 1b, in which we are asked to solve this equation, 2x over x minus 1 plus x minus 5 over x squared minus 1 equals 1. Just like in the earlier problems you may have worked, our first step is going to be to factor anything that we can. The only thing that looks factorable here is your x squared minus 1. You might notice that that is a difference of squares. Remember that x squared minus 1 is the same thing as x plus 1 x minus 1. Now. In order to solve this equation, we will need to think about the least common denominator. Now for our least common denominator, let's look at the terms that appear in the denominator. In our first fraction, our denominator says x minus 1. That's going to have to be part of our LCD here. The second fraction has x minus 1, which we have already, but we also need to have x plus 1 in there as well. And then the 1 after the equal sign has no denominator and will not affect the LCD. Let's first go ahead and rewrite this equation. 2x over x minus 1 plus x minus 5 over x plus 1 x minus 1 equals 1. Since 1 has no denominator, I'm going to put 1 over 1, just so it has some sort of denominator. Now we have to ask ourselves, what does each fraction need? Remember that our goal is to make each fraction's denominator look like the LCD that we just came up with. Let's first examine the fraction on the left. It has x minus 1, but it needs to have x plus 1 to go with it. The second fraction has x plus 1, x minus 1 in the denominator. This is a perfect match for the LCD. So this one is OK. The third fraction only has 1 in its denominator. It will need to have both x minus 1 and x plus 1. Here's what we should do. We're going to multiply on the top and bottom. by the missing piece. We're going to do this for all fractions. So the first fraction has x minus 1 already, but it needs x plus 1. So what we'll do is start with 2x over x minus 1, multiply both the top and the bottom by x plus 1. Let's do the same thing to the other fractions. Now the second fraction is already OK. It does not need any changes at all. The third fraction needs both x minus 1 and x plus 1. So we start with 1 over 1. We need x minus 1, x plus 1 on both the top and the bottom. We can begin simplifying the numerator at this point. I wouldn't do much with the denominator right now. I would say just simplify the numerator. So we take 2x times x and get 2x squared. We now take that 2x times the 1, get plus 2x. We then add x and negative 5. 
all of this will be over x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now on the right side, we're going to leave the denominator alone once again, but the numerator will simplify. We already know that x plus 1 times x minus 1 is the same thing as x squared minus 1, so that these parentheses, when we multiply them together, become x squared minus 1. Now we'll carry forward this equation and move all the terms that are on the right back to the left. So we'll take the x squared minus 1 and move it to the other side. When we do that, we will be subtracting x squared and adding 1. That'll leave us with 0 on the right. Still, this is going to be over x minus 1, x plus 1. There are going to be two parts to solving this equation from here. The first part is to set the numerator equal to 0. Let's see what that gives us. Let's just rewrite the entire numerator. It's kind of a mess, but we'll get this simplified. We'll take 2x squared minus x squared. This gives us x squared. We'll also take 2x plus x to get plus 3x. We will also take negative 5 and positive 1. Negative 5 plus 1 is minus 4 equals 0. This will be factorable, and we'll need to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 4. The first one that comes to mind for me is negative 4 plus 1. But if we take negative 4 plus 1, and add them together, we get negative 3. That is the wrong sign. So that means we'll have to do positive 4 and negative 1. That will give us positive 3, and that's a match for the 3x they gave us. So we'll make that change now. Set this equal to 0. Now we'll say x plus 4 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. Now if we solve the first expression here, x plus 4 equals 0, we'll get x equals negative 4. If we solve x minus 1 and move the negative 1 over, we'll get x equals 1. However, the second part of this question is going to be to check for answers that are out of the domain. The way we do that is we set the denominator not equal to 0. So we'll say for part 2, x minus 1, x plus 1 is not equal to 0. If we solve the first piece, we'll say x minus 1 is not 0, and x is not 1. For the second piece, we'll say x plus 1 is not 0. If we move the 1 over, we'll make that x not equal to negative 1. These are restricted values. So notice that one of our restricted values came up as one of our answers. We've said x is not equal to 1, and yet we came up with that in part 1 of this question. That means that this x equals 1 is a false answer. So the only true answer is going to be x equal to negative 4. And that's what will give us our final answer. x is equal to negative 4. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.